Hello, everyone. Uh, welcome, welcome to Connecting Humans for our fourth episode. Uh, we've been broadcasting already three episodes. The first one, remember, it was uh, how can we uh, do in time in crisis and what can we find new opportunities? The second one was how to stay motivated. Last week was focus. And we had a lot of comments, a lot of questions on your side. Thank you very much for that. What I would like you to do is to make sure that you let us know where you're broadcasting from, city, country, like that. We know where we are and we can uh, uh, actually see where do we connect throughout the world. Uh, today's, today's topic is a very interesting one and we got fantastic panelists and we got a guest today as well that is kind of a specialist of what we have inside here. Um, I will introduce her in a minute. So the topic today is how to let go of control and manage our emotional trigger. This is something that has been hitting us quite a lot, especially in time of crisis, but a lot of comments from uh, you, ladies and gentlemen, and, and uh, people around us ask us, okay, what can we do about it? Triggers are something that bother us in moments in life, in moments of getting promoted, in moments of any situation, and we cannot control and manage them. So the emission today is to talk about that. Without further ado, I would like to introduce you. One of the panelists uh, is Nazli. Nazli, hello, how are you? How are you feeling today? Good, good, fantastic. How are you, Alexandre? Oh, I am, oh, bust up. I am fantastic. <laughs> good, good. Yes, the second panelist from Luxembourg is Pascal. <laughs> <laughs> hey, hey, I am on fire. Not literally, but uh, waiting for your burning questions. <laughs> Fantastic. I've got some questions for you, ladies and gentlemen. You're going to be fun. And for a uh, producer, is the founder as well of Connecting Human. Eric is in a backstage. Hello, Eric from Barcelona. How are you? How are you? <laughs> I'm good. I'm good. I'm good. Thank you so much. Uh, this is interesting. Love it. <laughs> you love it? So you're yes. back on stage. You, we will find you again at the end, right, for your tips. So I'm pretty sure you got some fantastic tips as emotional trigger is kind of your things. Okay. <laughs> I will. Enjoy the show. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, ladies and gentlemen as well, uh, Eric's role is to take your comments and your questions and ask the panelists questions and also bring your comments to live. If you are interested to make your questions or comments live, let know Eric and Eric will give you a link. You will be broadcasting live with us in a studio to ask your question in live or make your comments. So thank you for that in advance. So bye bye, Eric. See you in a minute. <laughs> Here we in go. 45 minutes. Yes, in 45 minutes. Yes, I have to keep that under 45 minutes. So I've got some nice questions for you. First of all, and I may ask our guests to intervene here, what is the difference between an emotional trigger and an emotional outburst? Naz, what is for you the difference between the two? Um... I, I think for emotional triggers, is um, it's it's something that I feel it. Oh, I, I thought I was gone for a second. <laughs> okay, so um, emotional triggers, you know, like it's it's something that it kind of you know like happens to me um, throughout the day. So it's really um, you know it's it really just you know like just kind of. Um, um, like kind of you know like helps me to just to control and manage my uh, manage my emotions and if I don't you know like I kind of you know like have to see all these you know like uh, triggers that is actually causing that so it's a very like um, like an emotional stage um, and just to seeing all these you know causes you know like for the for for the actual you know like behavior that I'm behaving at that moment okay thank you Naz Eric do you have any comment on it you mean Pascal? If you mean me, okay, I, I'm not looking really similar to Eric, but uh, thanks for the compliment. Yeah, uh, as, uh, as Eric is half my age, so thanks <laughs> for that. Maybe that's also an emotional trigger. No, but I think emotional triggers, they come from outside. 
so it's always a trigger from the outside which will trigger something inside and then the outburst is from the inside which will go outside then so that's uh, that's actually the, the 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 circle that it's going to happen and um the interesting thing is the moment um the moment where we choose or where, where we make a decision unconscious or conscious in between what happens to us and what we will do so that's the millisecond of freedom that we have as a human species uh, in, in in man's search for meaning it's a it's a the nice book uh, from victor frankl is it in that that's actually the the millisecond it's not what happens to you is what you make of it but that's a really hard that's a lesson actually for a whole life where <laughs> where you have to struggle your whole life to learn this Fantastic. We are lucky to have a neuroscientist with us today, Daniele Helbrand. Sorry, Daniele. Uh, I will bring her on screen to give us her opinion uh, of the differences. Hello, Daniele. Sorry to have... Uh, uh, no, no, it's fine. Hi. I'm positively no. triggered by your positive emotions. So, Thank you. Um, you know, um, we process cues non-consciously in a, in a one-fifth of a second. And I'm with Pascal. We have this, this small window of time that we have time to react to a trigger. But a lot of the things that, that we do and that trigger us are subconsciously. So the first step is to bring the things and there you have to practice proprioception, you know, to, to be aware what you feel and what your triggers are. You have to be aware about yourself and your actions, how you react. And if you have that awareness and you check that, for example, uh, during a whole week or two weeks, um, what do I feel? What are the triggers? How do I react to that? You know, only if you make them conscious, then you can do something about it. And the interesting thing is there are so many triggers um, around us. And if I may give you one example. Um, a thing that fascinated me, I quit smoking 25 years ago. Okay. Two and a half years, I got divorced. This was not my first choice. And you know what I did after 25 years? I started smoking again. Unbelievable. So that habit, you know, I, I used to smoke when I was stressed. And that habit, I thought... It didn't exist anymore. But when that happened, the trigger, I got that trigger and I start to do, I start to smoke again. Fantastic. I will, I will jump on that to ask Pascal or Naz if they've got, if they're aware of some emotional trigger they've got. Naz, do you have, are you aware of one of your emotional trigger? Yes. Um, actually, you know, when, um, Emotional trigger, you know, like just giving like a stress in the workplaces, you know, uh, especially when I have, um, you know, what I have to do just to work overtime, uh, especially when my, you know, like my boss, you know, like former boss asked me to just to do overtime. I, I, I consciously or subconsciously just really just blame the event, the situation and not really just the seeing, um, you know, like around other colleagues, you know, what they have more like free to say that, you know, they don't they are not kind of available to be overtime um they're not going to be able to work in overtime so i always you know like go to situation uh where i stress at work and just not blame the event or the situation more than just looking at myself like danielle mentioned like just really consciously understanding um is that just you know like my behavior you know like not really communicating well or understanding the situation or just the blaming the boss all the time so i had that you know like stressful moments where i thought i was burning myself out because of my boss is that actually i was doing it myself and i i heard about you know like smoking uh you know like example danielle you 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 gave because i quit smoking like six seven years ago and um and i talked to some people that that some situation just it triggers you know like coming back to smoking uh in their life which was really fascinating how the events you know like or you know like uh, emotional triggers actually uh gets that out so uh Thank you. Thank you, Naz. Uh, Pascal, do you have any example? Something that you you have that emotional trigger? Um, yeah, de definitely. Um, <clears throat> one uh, it, it just just uh, recently uh, came up when I read an article about the German uh, health minister. Uh, I don't know if he said it like this, huh? so we, I, let's give him the 
the benefit of the doubt, but if, if, there was a, the headline, I cannot imagine, um, I, I cannot imagine that uh, that carnival is going to happen. Mm. And I just had in my in my head, yeah, but you're a leader. So what can you imagine? So that is already a trigger for me for for when when people have these limiting beliefs and only also communicate in that this is really triggering something in me and it's uh, then i react spontaneously and and uh, also in a very emotional way you know so uh, from my part i quit smoking seven six or seven times no i'd never smoked so um uh, <laughs> lucky lucky for me and that but I, I, there, there are other things which where where you um where you can see actually when you have this emotional reaction you eat certain things or you do certain things when when this trigger happens you you do that automatically unconsciously without without knowing for i i yeah people that know me know when i'm stressed when something happens and then i get more introvert when it goes into into stress so i get more calm and then i do things like you know that's already a, an automatic reaction it's a you know, the emotions stay inside, but they see already that something is triggering me in that matter. So, so if I understand well, to resume the difference between the two, uh, emotion trigger is something that is subconscious, that we have something in our mind, that it's an automatic response to a situation. However, an emotional outburst, I would say, is something that's cumulate, 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 and a certain point it explodes. That's the main difference. Daniele, before I let you go, it's kind of thinking. Thinking. Yeah. I'm sorry. Daniele, before uh, we let you go, do you have any question for Pascal or Nazli? For me? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I have so many questions for Pascal I already. Um, out. You know, how do you. How do you try to be aware or try to get aware about your triggers first question and the second is what do you do to try to cope with the triggers so, so how do you cope with it and what do you do to cope with it so the first question would be for naz how do you notice your emotional trigger <laughs> okay, so um, by experience, you know, by just, you know, like going through a lot of, you know, um, situational, uh, like a reaction, just not understanding my triggers, you know, for many years, uh, especially right now, you know, just managing my or controlling my, uh, my emotions and also trying to help my son to, you know, like, uh, like seven years old and kind of managing, you know, like his emotions. Um, how I, you know, like I identify, you know, like in this situation just by asking myself and, uh, you know, like, how did I, how did I react it? What are some of the internal causes? Like right after that, just kind of triggers goes back to past, you know, like a kind of, you know, like trying to understand why I acted the same way this way you know um and that kind of you know like i and i keep a journal you know like i write it right you know like this is how you behave nas and then you know like when you come back and i challenge myself and put myself in this similar kind of situation to practice that and sometimes you got to push your um you know push your boundaries a little bit you know just to understand how you um aware of your um your emotions and then those triggers Okay. Something I can retain from that, that's uh, having a journal, having a uh, writing down how you react into a situation can help you go back on it and see, okay, that situation I reacted that way. That's a fantastic tip. Pascal, the second question, how can you cope with your emotional, or what do you do to cope with your emotional trigger? Well, um, um, first of all is, of course, to get to get aware of the trigger. That's the, that's the first thing that you identify what is the what is the real trigger and then i have a sentence where i where i then put in the blanks mm -hmm. i have a sentence mm -hmm. that's then when this and this happens so when the trigger happens instead of and then i write what i don't want to do and then i write i do and then i write actually what i want to do how i want to behave how i want to react and that's already something which is then i i have it on paper Okay. And then uh, uh, I have to repeat it as a mantra when this and this happens. Maybe sometimes I still react in that kind of way. 
but then I, I already get more and more conscious about it because, oh, yeah, you have said you are want you want to react like this. Next time it goes a little better, then it goes a little better and so on and so on. So this is how I can instead. So when this and this happens, instead of doing this, I do this. I do. And this helps me to yeah to condition myself in that yeah. matter. And also I want to just I just want to add that what it really helped um you know with my thoughts because I think you know like controlling your thoughts in that situation it really helps like your beliefs um that accepting that we all have emotional triggers you know accepting that that is not just happening to you is a great step to uh, you know just educate your 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 people around you um even like practicing with my son the other day you know like when i think i reacted you know based on some of the you know emotional triggers that just you know like made him a little bit more um anxious or angry and i realized that i went back to him and you know i said you know i i, I am sorry you know like i actually just reacted on something that i didn't really mean to and those practices is kind of you know like lets you be aware of more if the situation comes along even further mm -hmm. fantastic yeah. thank you very much for your answers thank you daniele for those questions that uh, uh broach those two panelists to Let's in a little bit of, of themselves. Thank you very much for participating. Bye. Thanks, Angela. <laughs> Thank you. Yeah, we have another guest, Claudia Dasho, who would like to intervene as well. So uh, here she is. Hello, Claudia. Can you Hello. let us know who you are and, and then ask your questions or make your comments? Well, first of all, very nice to meet you all. Um, I'm from Cologne, Germany, and I'm very uh, happy and honored to be part of this panel. Um, I am an actress and an expert for body language. That, so that is what I work on with people. And when it comes to um, getting aware of what is triggering you, like how do you become aware of it, the answer is the body will tell you. Like you can see it in, in the mimic uh, of a person instantly. And because well, we always talk about emotional triggers and emotional reactions and our thoughts. And it seems like something we can manage with our mind. But the truth is we all have these two brains. And so we have this old brain, which like I call the primal brain with the stress center, which is where the triggers get triggered. And then there is the prefrontal cortex with all these beautiful skills like analysis, design, creativity, architecture, music, all that but this is not where the triggers happen. So they happen in a part of the brain that we share like with lizards and chickens and like a very old part and it reacts instantly. Okay. So when we have a reaction that is instant, like something happens, we like, Tush! then we know that was a trigger. First of all, the speed of the reaction tells us that something was triggered. And secondly, um, we have these well, also primal reactions in the face. So the moment you feel your eyes rolling, by the way, it's not, for example, somebody tells you, oh, Nesli, I'm sure you don't mind that Friday night you can stay like till 11.30 and do this, finish this project at night. You don't need your weekend or something. And you'll be like, sure, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> and this little moment of, no, not sure, but this moment your, your eyes escape, that tells you, oh, you got triggered, but then maybe you catch it and become socially, you know, nice again and say something nice, but this little reaction happens before. And when you notice that, also maybe in the stomach, a feeling that when something happens that scares you, the feeling in the stomach, that's instant, or this little feeling like, when you are in the traffic and you hit the brakes a little too uh, late and you almost crash into somebody, that feeling that goes all the way through your blood and it's like a flash that's instant. Mm -hmm. So every time you have this instant full body reaction, that's a trigger and you can manage it by breathing deeply, first of all, becoming aware that it's a trigger. Humor helps sometimes when you're like, oh, you know, um, feeling yourself get really, really mad, sometimes it really helps to completely over-exaggerate it, almost like a clown, mm -hmm. and, and go in a moment of, oh my God, 
what this is absolutely terrible and just make fun of yourself almost because most little triggers are not that you know terrible when somebody cuts us in traffic either we go like okay go ahead or just go completely overboard and make fun of yourself those are two things that really help well thank you very much claudia for your intervention that was great and uh you can as well to find a specialist of uh, uh, Non-verbal communication. I'm also a specialist into that. So thank you very much for sharing. Okay. And I hide you from the screen. Come through and let us know if you want to intervene again. Okay. Thank you. Right. Here we go. Uh, I've got some other questions. Is there any question from the public? Uh, so far, nothing. So I will come with another questions I've got here. Uh, and Alexander, you know, um, right before you asked that question, you know, for Claudia, you know, what, what she meant about what she said about the body language, that I have to say that it just reminded me of when I was 16 years old, you know, like learning English. And when I didn't speak any English, I was just really communicating through my body language. Mm -hmm. And um, I do believe that, you know, from those days that I still have some emotional triggers that just reminds me of back then. You know, it kind of, you know, like it, it I, I react with my body language or, you know, like with my face or, you know, my eyes, you know, that kind of reminds me of those days. So it's, it's, it's fascinating that, you know, she said that I totally agree about, um, about that body language that's, uh, that's, that where we can actually um, catch our um, body language, right? This understanding and being aware of our behaviors. Definitely. I mean, even though I mean that we can see those first reactions are apparent. You know, when you do something wrong, when your mom yeah. or your dad just boom, look at you with one step, yes. the direct reaction, and woo, yes, I know I've done something wrong. Okay, the way yeah. I try to the sound, our five senses can affect uh, our trigger, can pull out our trigger. Pascal, any comments on what uh, Claudia said? Yeah, I I really um, can relate to to what she said. As um, of course, emotions are are uh, coming from the chemicals that are then going into the body. Then you react in a certain way. It goes very fast, and they are all based on on certain emotional fears that we still have. And the the the, the two basic emotional fears that we still have in our emotional brain that's uh, not being enough and not being loved, not being mm -hmm. part of the tribe, and almost everything, every reaction also from your from the other part. Even if they react in a certain way, what you don't like, we should always ask yourself, where does it come from? Because mostly they come from exactly this limiting belief, this fear, I am not enough, I am not loved. And if you reflect on this, actually you cannot be mad at somebody who's reacting in a certain way. Because if you react where this is coming from, but that's mm -hmm. of course mm -hmm. difficult when you are part of the scene, when you are also emotional, then it gets of course then tricky this is where you need a bigger frame, a bigger yeah landscape, a yeah. bigger thing, a bigger picture, and that's that's so so to reflect on it afterwards always is good. But I like the humor part where where she said it, mm -hmm. and yeah. I have also a, a trick uh, uh, when it comes to humor. I um, I use words that are funny. Um, so they they say the same thing, but they are funny. It's it's hard to to say that in English. For example, when I'm when I when I'm not okay with something, I don't say I'm mad. I say it in a German, ich bin pikiert. So that's such a funny word because nobody is saying that word. And then I have to laugh myself because my my the, the other part we also have to laugh. And then already the emotion is a little bit in a different way, and I also have to laugh. So um, yeah, that's that's yeah. making it a little easier to cope with it. I understand, and when you when you feel, I mean, if I resume, when you feel that emotion coming out from the stomach, from from our reaction, we can straight away hu using humor or even apologize. Why not? You know, I burst out. Sorry about that, and off we go. That's several things we can do. I've got some uh, um, questions that will be for Pascal. Uh, um, we say losing control. Or manage. What's the difference between controlling and managing our emotions? Hmm. Thanks for this trap. <laughs> <laughs> no, it is not. I would say, if, from my perspective, control is an illusion. 
the only thing what you can control is is your yourself the only thing what you can control is your mind and your reaction and that's but control control external things that's not possible that's an illusion so you have to get rid of the illusion of control that's that's my view on it and but you, what you can do is manage with the main, with the hands that's la main that's where managing is coming from to do something to to manipulate something outside of you to that's managing that's doing something out of sight so controlling yes when it comes to yourself that's that's maybe what you can do um it it requires a lot of a lot of work in a work uh, to get that done but controlling anything outside of you uh, good luck with it so that would be my my differentiation of these two things and my tips to don't get frustrated by trying to control anything that's outside of you manage it yeah. yes yeah and also i think pascal i just want to add you know when you try to control your feelings it gets worse right you know it's even like and because you're just really just putting yourself in a stress and even like okay um you know your your, your behavior um in terms of you know like that stress cause even might get worse so understanding you know it's very very key to manage because you know if you don't recognize it um if you don't recognize it how can you manage it yeah. And uh, I think that's very important for um, social and emotional intelligence. And that has been yeah. really my uh, my area that I have focused, you know, for the past few years. And it's amazing. It's fascinating how you can you can you can be emotionally self-aware and um, and having that um, kind of eye opening experience um, helped me a lot personally. And I came up with more alternative too you know, in the situations and coming up with different alternative, because if you can just say, I'm going to stop this behavior, then you need to substitute with the new one. You can't just stop talking to people. You're like, okay, I'm not going to behave. So I know this is kind of wrong, but if the next trigger comes, I'm going to stop talking to them. So that's not it's managing. So it's very important to come up with some alternatives. To resume yeah. what both of you said, I mean, controlling is not something possible on a country. If you try to control, you're going to go worse into the negative behavior or situation that you try to control. However, managing is to, okay, I understand what is happening. Okay, these are my solution. This is the option I've got. Using humor, breathing, uh, stepping back, saying, you know what, give me a minute in order for me to reconcile. And then we can continue to have that conversation. So there is a difference between controlling and managing. Don't try to control, however, manage your emotions. Yes, control uh, creates yeah. resistance. Exactly, exactly. There is a, another question and this one will be, we start with Naz. There is, since uh, uh, Daniel Goldman brought that forward with his book, uh, Emotional Intelligence, that comes a lot, but it is placed in, in every situation, a lot of people are talking about emotional intelligence, but they don't really know what they are talking about. So, can you give us some uh, some words on emotional intelligence? What is for you uh, high emotional intelligence? How can we use that term in a correct way? Yes. So, I, I think the the key with uh, emotional intelligence, just like I always say, is the authenticity. You know, especially for leaders. You know, I, and I believe everybody is a leader, um, and it's really bringing that authenticity with the self awareness and just really managing your emotions um, and understanding with the empathy and putting the empathy on uh, on um, on your you know, on your relationship, you know, especially if you are want to be working on your emotional int intelligence. And it is not something we are born with, you know, um, but it's something that could be learned. So it is very, very, um, you know, it, it's good that, you know, we. if you are interested in, you know, like your emotional self-awareness, then you can still work on it and be, um, and get your, you know, like work on your emotional intelligence. And really the self-regard, um it's one of my favorite is really asking people to give you feedback most of the people are just you know like fail in this stage and you know, including myself many times because you know like those triggers that you're trying to control but you need to manage and you're just in between so when you are very good with self-regard and just getting some feedback from your family maybe start with your family and close friends and then you know when you're in a work environment when you're running a business then you should 
just really have that high intelligence to actually accept that and take it and just see as an opportunity for your development. And that is the key for, uh, you know, for like a work environment, you know, for even like a working together, um, even being in a uh, social environment to do that. Yeah. Th thank you very much, Naz. Pascal, you want to add something on that? Well, <clears throat> I think also everybody's emotional intelligence depends on the level. <laughs> and also with how like the analytical intelligence you can train that. So you have to work on it. That's that's the that's the thing. And um the more emotional intelligence you have, the more it always starts with you. That's the point. It starts with you. A lot of people want to start with other people because that's the easy way. That's again controlling, trying to control the outside world. Yeah, exactly. And that's not that's not possible. That's 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 the uh, that's when control comes in. That's when the bad leadership comes in. That's when everything what we know is not working. That that comes in. So we have to first self awareness, self leadership, working on yourself, and mm -hmm. then you can start to to work with with other people. Uh, as we need role models in these, also with emotional intelligence. That's that's one of the basic things. What emotional intelligence means to me, at least. Exactly. Thank you very much. I mean, to resume a little bit uh, 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 between what you have said, emotional intelligence is something that we have to understand for ourselves first, as Pascal said, in order to be able to uh, understand others and manage others. All right. Yes. So, Mabel's got a question here. So, Mabel's question Do you think by controlling the body language, the emotion will also be softened or managed? So that question, Pascal is doing like this, so that will be <laughs> Yes, I will go next. Yeah, my, my, my advice here is uh, look for the research of Dr. Amy Cuddy, who has done so much work with, with exactly this, how, how our body language also controls our emotions. So she did that with the superpower poses, you know, when you stand like the Superman or Superwoman, what it has an effect also on your emotions. She, she did some fantastic research about this, that your when you have these superpower poses, that your testosterone level goes up, uh, your self-awareness goes up, your self-esteem goes up just by body language. So by, by making yourself small, for example, your self-esteem goes down because that's that's the same thing. And uh, don't don't get me wrong, but that's also what you what you learn at first when you are training your your pets your dog that you have to also use this kind of they also have the same system the same stuff when you when you use your body that's the part of embodiment so yes that's definitely possible uh, maybe uh, um, uh, our our guest Claudia knows it better than I do uh, because she uh, maybe she has I'm pretty sure some tips and tricks practical ones how to do that you know how to put the uh, the, the the pencil here and suddenly you get funny and and whatever you that that's definitely maybe she can she can bring in some some practical tips in that but yes I think that's very 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 but Dr Amy Cuddy just look it up the book is called Presence okay now do you want to add something and I will um, I, 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 go ahead. No, I just agree with um, Pascal, and because you know, just through my experience, my personal experience with the body language, it's really controlling or managing, you know, like your body and mind at the same time. It really, really helps your you know, emotional, uh, you know, like a triggers and manage them uh, much more efficiently. Okay, I will let uh, uh, Claudia uh, uh, have a word on that. If you don't mind, I bring her back. Sure. Yes, Hello, Claudia. You wanted Hello. to say something. Yes. <laughs> Hello again. So, oftentimes when we don't have much experience with body language, we think, oh, something happens and then our body reacts to it. So, there is an event, we get sad, and then we are down. But it's actually vice versa. So, if we have a posture like this, shoulders to the front, making ourselves small, we're like having a posture like a little animal that is scared of being eaten or like bitten, uh, chased, and it, that is hiding. And in that moment, through the like spinal cord, the signals go to the brain that something must be up. Even if nothing has happened, our body will inform our brain that there is danger because our posture says that. So when we feel down or like low or anything, what we can do is deliberately like sit up and if we don't even have to go like this but we we can but even if we just sit up and 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 expose the neck and instead of doing this 
you know, sit up straight and tell our brain that we are okay, that we are safe because a lion in the desert sit, doesn't sit like this. He said like, yeah, I got this under control. Um, another thing though that is super important, it's not just about putting your body like this or making your thoughts go like that. I think the most important thing in all this trigger business is to first of all, fall in love with beautiful humanity, with your humanness. Because we all have this thought that, oh, it would be best if we never got triggered or if we never had this outburst reactions or if we are always normal and nice. There's kind of this thing of how do I manage, how do I control? And it's the thing is, first of all, emotions cannot be controlled. They're there to inform you that something doesn't feel right. So something isn't okay for you. And first to acknowledge it and also to give some love to whatever your feeling is. Because I always hear these things, I got to work on myself. No, you've got to love on yourself much more. And because if you get kindness to those spots that maybe are wounds or scars that still hurt, then you have a chance of actually healing them. Then you have a chance of getting your triggers down or, or being okay and safe with them. And so, yeah, so I think that's the best thing. Thing. Yeah. Thank you very much for your inputs. Okay, thank you. I will ask you some questions at the end as well, just some tips. Okay, so stay, stay with us. Oh, Pascal, we have lost uh, Naz, I guess. Well, she, she may come back in a minute. Uh, something I would like to, uh, to uh, a quick story about uh, uh, controlling emotion, managing emotion. When I was working in a kitchen, we had an executive chef. When you speak to him, he was always calm. And you could see when he started to get red that the emotion would come up. And he would always say, excuse me a second. He would go to the cold chamber, then to the freezer in the back, and he would be, and then he would come back nice and fresh and say, okay, where were you? <laughs> what are we talking about in order to deal with emotion? The lesson I learned from that, there is nothing wrong to say to the people you're talking to, can you give me a minute? And then you go away to breathe, to do something for you to calm yourself down and then come back to the discussion. Pascal, any comment on that? Uh, you mute, you muted. Now, now you can hear me. Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, of course, I have a, I have, I have a sentence for this. You know that. Uh, I say better the war outside than inside. So that's that's what how I see it. You know, better to bring it out the energy instead of pressing it inside, and it will damage something. It will make you sick or whatever or crazy, and you overthink. Whatever it is, better the war outside than inside. Better to. Of course, doing it in a in a nice way. Huh? That's then that could be maybe next week, <laughs> how yeah. to have a, a peaceful conversation. But uh, sometimes it's better to go, to let it out. Definitely. De and when you find your way of doing that and you you're fine with it, perfect. If not, then try everything what you can. You will find the right way to do that. Okay, so we we are arriving slowly at the end. I would like uh, to ask, and I will bring up the two uh, ladies. Okay, Danielle and, and, and Claudia, for them to give us a short tips, how can we manage our emotions, right? So I will bring you in. Hello, Daniela again, and hello, Claudia. Thank you. So the question that we'll ask the three of you, and then I will ask uh, Eric as well at the end. Ah, Nazli is coming back. Uh, a short tip, how can we manage our strong emotions. So uh, Claudia, would you like to start? Yeah, I can start. So if you feel something really strongly and it needs to get out and you don't want to yell at the next person, the really easy thing is to let your body move. So it can be dancing with really loud music that has a rhythm, a pounding rhythm to it because it will go to this part like right under the um, lung where where the emotions are connected to so get a pounding rhythm going shake move or box in the air or box into a pillow or get your gloves on and box into a bag you know get something that has impact going and that can already let it out if there is a possibility for you to let out a scream or a sigh or a uh, all that helps just release 
the body. And sometimes if you feel like crying, no shame in that either. Crying is very healthy. Let it flow out the eyes and then let's release the, the emotion. And you, if you have another person with you present, you can explain to them like your, your chef also did. I need a moment and I'm going to cry now a little bit and I'm going to be okay in a moment. It's not against you, but this needs to go somewhere. This is, I think, a very healthy way. Thank you very much, uh, Claudia. Daniele, a short tip, how to manage your emotion? No, I have a lot of tips, but I'm with Claudia. It's very, very important to move. Um, also, Claudia was talking about posture. It also is for your face. You know, we have a motor pathway that makes our muscles do the things we want to do, but also an emotional pathway that has a connection with our muscles. So we can see in the face of another person if he's stressed, if he has a happy life, if he had a lot of sorrow, we can see that in the face. So watch your face, watch your face. And Botox is also very dangerous because it's flat with the emotion. But okay. A tip, you ask a tip. I have a lot of tips, but okay. for myself, I what I'm good at is kitchen sinking. You know, I can pile up all the dirt, trigger, 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 trigger. I think I can handle, I can handle, I can handle, I can handle until I cannot handle it anymore. And then I explode and explode very, very bad. So don't do that. Be aware when there are more triggers. So let it out. And one of the most important things what Claudia said, move, do something. Don't let it get stuck into your body. The other thing is the whoop, I wrote it in the comments. Um, if you want to change something, if you want to, to watch your triggers, uh, you know, make a wish. So, for example, I don't want to react to situation X, Y, or Z. What is the outcome you want? But also watch the obstacles. Let's make an example for losing weight. The wish is I want to lose weight. I want to lose my corona weight five kilos. The outcome is minus five kilos or more. No? Mm -hmm. um, I work near the fridge. Very, very bad. The obstacles are the fridge is near my kitchen table from which I work. I have lots, you know, I eat very, I, I like to eat, etc. So I have to make a plan. If I'm nervous and I want to eat something, or if I have a party, what's the plan so I don't overeat, for example? What okay. do I do to which is to smoke less? I, what's, what are the obstacles and what's my plan? And the last thing I want to mention, I just... We, we, okay. my, that's the last thing. Triggers from Marshall Goldsmith. Okay. A very, very good book about triggers. Thank you. We will put that in the comments. Thank you very much. Nazli, welcome back. A short tips how to manage your emotion. Can you hear us? A short. Okay, Pascal, we're going on you, and then we come back on on Nazli. So, Pascal, a short, short way to manage your emotion. Well, I I would ask myself a question when I have an emotional reaction on something. I would just I would start asking myself a question: What am I afraid of? Okay. And maybe that helps me to define the trigger. And when I define the trigger, then I can define the outcome that I don't want and the outcome that I want. I have the sentence again. So what am I afraid of? And that's a hard question to ask yourself. I know, uh, <laughs> but it's right. it's also it's also a good question. Thank you, Nazli. Can you hear us? Yes, now I can. You know, my my computer just shut down for like you know, two three minutes, but I controlled my emotion. No, I manage my emotions. <laughs> so, um, yes, my body language still smiling. Yes. Um, so I think I, I will give two two tips. It's just really, um, you know, making time, making some time to relax. Sometimes, you know, we put a lot of pressure on ourselves. Make time, time to relax and just really uh, talk to yourself. And uh, having a journal really helped me because sometimes, you know, like our mind thinks that unconsciously that we know everything and we are actually aware of things. But, you know, according to psychologists and then the you know, research, 95% of people, they think that they are self-aware, but they are not. So it's very important to start working on it and uh, making some, you know, like a work and writing and reading. And, you know, like Claudia mentioned, I think it's a great to just do the exercise in front of the mirror. I remember doing that when I was learning English. Um, it helps, you know, even if you know, uh, even if you don't have a confidence, 
you know, it kind of helps you to have that confidence with that body gesture. So exactly. it is very true. Um, I actually just live it uh, by, by, by experience, so. Fantastic, thank you very much. Taking a call back, Eric, for his tip. Hello, Eric, welcome back. Thank you for producing Behind the Scene. What is, hey. uh, what is your short tip to uh, manage your emotion? Um. Sitting here listening to all of you, I'm just taking away. You've said beautiful things, and I, I really want to emphasize on what has been going on, and that is that an emotional trigger is a trigger for you. It's your personal one. Please don't make it about anybody else or others. It's you, <laughs> and it's a trigger. So it doesn't mean that it's going to be bad or good, right or wrong. There's something within you. So I'm going to jump onto what Claudia said. Make love with it. It's a trigger within you, and you decide what you want to do with it. Fantastic. Leaving it there. Thank you, Eric. Okay. That brings us to the end next, of our session. Next time, Eric, Alexandre. Yes. Is then the tip that, that Eric can bring into the tips that he always brings on LinkedIn um, puts on some Barry White. <laughs> Make love to the trick. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> Put on so, Yeah, that's a good one. I would, I would write that down. I will write that down right now okay. immediately. Fantastic. Okay, I would like to thank you, Claudia, for coming. Thank, thank you very so much for having me. Both of them. I say you bye-bye. Bye. -bye bye. Good luck for everyone. So bye-bye and bye-bye here. All right. So that's the end of our, our show. So thank you very much for attending, for your comment, for your questions. And uh, uh, next time we will let you know as soon as possible what is our uh, uh, next question next episode. I would like to take that opportunity as well to thank Nazli very much. That would be the last time she's with us. And thank you for your effort. Thank you for your contribution. Thank you for everything that you do for us. Okay. And we wish you good luck for uh, your future and anything you're going you're gonna to do. And you know, we are here to help you. We're here. If you need anything, just connect with us. Yes, thank, thank you so you. much. It's been very fun, and I hope to be back. And thank you, everyone. I will, I will be watching you closely. So those are very great tips for each topic. Okay. Thank you very much. That concludes the Connecting Humans episode for today. Thank you. Bye-bye.